Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Configuring Lag Interfaces CLI Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In the example, we have two devices, VSREX1 and VSREX2. Now, the thing I do want to point out here is that even though we are using two security devices, most of this learning byte still applies for other devices with configuring lag. In this learning byte, we will configure the lag interface and then we'll have to place it in a security zone. Now, if we were using a different device like VMX or QFX or EX or something like that, then we would just not do that security zone part. But the rest of the learning byte would be applicable to any other device that you can configure lag on that uses the Juno CLI. All right, so getting that out of the way, we have the two devices. And between those two devices, we have Gigi005 through Gigi008. So that's four interfaces that connect those two devices together. Now, those interfaces are going to be the member interfaces for AE0. And AE0, which is our lag interface, is going to use the subnet of 10.1.5.0 slash 24. And then we will use LACP to monitor the lag interface members. And then after we get things set up and running, we are going to look at the LACP status and statistics and then we'll examine the AE0 interface status. And lastly, we'll make sure communication happens over that AE0 interface by sending some ping traffic. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSREX1 and get this started. So here is the CLI of VSREX1. And first we'll need to jump into configure mode and set the device count for the amount of aggregate ethernet interfaces we want to use. That's done under the chassis, aggregate devices, ethernet device count, and we'll set that to one. And what this does is this tells the system to set up an aggregate ethernet interface and to use the number of AE0 for it. Now, if we were to set that to two, it would set up AE0 and AE1. Three would be AE0, one, and three. So keep that in mind. This is how you create the aggregate ethernet interfaces. The next, let's jump into the interface configuration. And we need to set the member interfaces. And then we need to specify the interface, which is gonna be AE0. Now we're using 802.3AD because that's the specification for aggregate ethernet. And then what we can do next is we can just copy Gigi 5 to Gigi 6 and 7 and 8. And next we need to set the AE0 interface parameters. We'll do aggregated ether options and we need to set LACP to active. And then we need to set the AE0 unit 0 information. That's just going to be the family INAT address and that's going to be 10.5.1.1 slash 20. Helps if I add address first. And then lastly, we need to configure the security zone. Now, remember, as I said before, if this was any other device like a VMX, an MX, QFX, EX, things like that, this is where we would stop. We would be done configuring the aggregate Ethernet interface. Now, there might be some routing and other things you need to configure, but as far as the actual aggregate Ethernet interface, the lag interface, we would be done. But since this is a security device, VSRX, we do need to configure the security zone and place that interface in the security zone. Put the interface in there, and we're gonna set the host inbound traffic of any service, which is going to allow for anything to come into the interface. And so this is gonna allow us to test the ping communication. Now, if this was a production device, I highly recommend you don't just do this as any service. You'd wanna specify which services you want allowed, but for a lab situation, like where we're doing this learning byte, that's perfectly fine. And then let's commit the configuration. And then we need to jump to VSREX2 and do the mirror configuration. All right, here is the VSREX2 device. Let's jump into configure mode and we need to configure the device count. I'll set that to one. And let's jump into interfaces, set the member interfaces to be associated with AE0. And we can copy that configuration. 
And then we need to set AE0, the aggregate ethernet options, we'll configure LACP to be active. Now this side could be set to passive and it would work, but we also can set it to active and it'll work just fine. Then we need to configure the logical unit. And again, like I said with VSRX1, if this were another Junos device, such as MX, VMX, QFX, EX, things like that, then we'd be done here. But since this is a security device, we need to actually configure the security zone and place this interface in a security zone for it to work. And we set the system services to any services and commit the configuration. And so let's look at the AE0 interface information. And here we can see the memory interfaces that are associated with AE0. So those are the memory interfaces, Giggy 5 through 8. And then we can see AE0 is up and functioning and has the correct IP address applied to it. So let's look at the LACP information. And we can see here LACP is functioning correctly. We can see all the member interfaces. And we can see that under the activity field that it's set to active. That's great. That means it's active and it's working. Things look good. And we're passing information. And the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure we can communicate over that interface. Let's go ahead and ping VSRX1 from VSRX2. And you can see the ping works well with no problems. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is you might notice that that first packet got lost. And the reason behind that is we had to send an ARP from VSRX1 to find out what the MAC address is that is associated with the 10.5.1.1 IP address on VSRX1. So that's why that first packet is missed. If we do that to ping again, all five packets will go through no problem. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. In this learning bite, we demonstrated how to configure lag interfaces using the Junos CLI, and then we also demonstrated how to verify those lag interfaces using the Junos CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.